We've all heard it. Isn't keto just like any other diet? You just have to reduce the amount of food you eat, fewer calories. Let's talk about that. Hi, Casey Durango here of Go Keto with Casey, where I like to talk about how I've lost 97.4 pounds since starting the ketogenic protocol, how you might be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life. So, have, have you heard this? I've heard it. I mean, we read it. It's been the news. It's in opinion articles. Maybe our second cousin told us when they find out we're doing a low-carb, high-fat, or ketogenic diet. By the way, it's not exactly high-fat. It's only high-fat in that it's not low-fat. You're not out searching for fat, but that'll be a topic of another Go Keto with Casey Quickie. So what would make this different? You can lose weight in many ways. Many ways. Many people are super successful on things like Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, just move more, eat less. They're, you know, very regimented about getting in aerobic and weight training exercises and restricting calories. You can lose weight on a low-fat diet. So what makes this different? Talking as someone who struggled with my weight for 30 years, from my mid-20s to my mid-50s, and if you saw the little intro, you could see my before photos. I tried the triathlons. I tried... Those photos are not even near my heaviest weight. You know, I had a gym membership all the time. Here's a clue. Having a gym membership does not actually burn calories. You actually have to do something. <laughs> but I would, you know, and I would go to the gym and I would try. What makes this different? For those of you who don't know, the ketogenic protocol is one whereby you reduce your carbohydrate intake to a level where the liver quits pumping out glucose for fuel and our bodies happily switch over to burning fat for fuel. Ketone bodies, hence the name ketogenic diet. We are in ketosis, which is burning fat for fuel. And for most people, that's gonna be 20 grams of carbohydrate a day, total grams, not net, or fewer. You know, eat fatty sources of protein. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. It's pretty simple and straightforward. So again, what makes it different? It kills appetite. You know, plowing through Weight Watchers or The Biggest Loser or Low Fat, in my experience, I was always battling hunger. I was hungry. I thought about food all the time. This almost immediately, when I started it, and all I did was, the first time I ate after Rehearing about it actually, because I knew since 1977 that low carb worked for me. But the next time I ate, when I decided, because I didn't want to take insulin for diabetes, that was my motivator. So I Googled how to not take insulin for type 2 diabetes, came across Dr. Eric Westman's white coat video, and the instructions were keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. If it's not on page four, don't eat it. Link to page four is the copyrighted page four is below. Don't eat if you're not hungry. So I thought, well, zero was fewer than 20. So the next time I ate, I just laid off the carbs. I didn't go out and buy special food or anything else. I didn't tell anyone I was doing it. I just laid off the carbs. And one of the first things that I noticed, like in three days, is that my hunger was gone. Not only that, a couple more days, my appetite was suppressed. You know, hunger and appetite are two different things in my mind. And then I realized, I, I'm not thinking about food. I, the first time I it got to be 2.30 in the afternoon, I was, I was busy and I realized I haven't eaten or thought about eating. It was a revelation. I was one of those people, particularly in the low fat days, you know, you, you eat your supposedly heart healthy breakfast of steel cut oats, skim milk, orange juice, and cottage cheese. And then, because there's almost no nutrition in any of that, in two and a half hours, I'm roaming the halls looking for something else to eat because my brain was telling me, get me some more glucose. When you're a sugar burner, glucose burner, your brain keeps asking for it. 
When you're a fat burner, your brain's perfectly happy. We have plenty of fat on us. So that brain hunger was gone. Now, over the course of time, I had to learn what actual physical hunger felt like. It had been so long, if I'd ever sensed it. But that's what's the difference between every other diet that I ever experienced and this one. I had a t-shirt, they're all sold, they've sold out like three times. Food is not the boss of me. Now I have a t-shirt, I'm stronger than a cookie. Because then you start to realize, I, I don't need a cookie or a slice of cake, or a, I can pass on that. And now things that I thought I, I couldn't go the rest of my life without eating, I don't, not only do I not think about them, I could have them placed in front of me and I'm not interested. It seems too good to be true, but it's not. It is true. And if I can do this, you can do this. So when somebody tells you, ah, it's just like every other diet, or it's a fad, not a fad. It didn't just start five years ago when the word keto started popping up everywhere. It didn't start with Dr. Eric Westman. It didn't start with Dr. Robert Atkins. At least back to William Banting in England, an undertaker who wrote the treatise on corpulence. It at least goes back to 1863. And, and actually that's just documented. This is the way we're designed to eat. This is a very nutrient dense way to eat. It suppresses appetite. Hunger goes away. It's one of the first signs. You don't need to test for ketone bodies by urine, blood, or breath or anything. You don't need to buy one tool or special food. You'll know that, it, that you're burning fat for fuel when you realize I'm not hungry and my appetite is gone. Now, obviously, it's not gone every day, every hour, for months at a time. We do get hungry. And then, and then we eat. But the food is so satisfying, we need less of it. We need it less frequently, and it's so nutrient dense, our health improves, and it's just food. You just lay off the carbs. So, you can tell people, this may not be the protocol for you, friend, but it's the protocol for me, and it's different than anything I've ever tried before. You never know, you might influence someone. So. Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Total, not net. If it's not on page four, don't eat it. Don't eat if you're not hungry and stop when you're satis satisfied. Those last two parts are the most challenging. You can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. Thanks for allowing me to be part of your day, and I'll see you with the next Go Keto with Casey Quickie.